we've already debunked, debunked uh, Groundhog's Day and um, and Easter, right? So now we're at Taint Patrick's Day, right? So paint, paint, <laughs> my bad. Taint Patrick, uh, Taint Patrick's Day happened before Passover and Easter, and they're all associated with the spring equinox. So when it comes to which day sim is symbolic of spring, um, Taint Patrick's Day actually wins. So it's got a greater potential to retain. Um, especially since it's tied in with the Irish American roots, right? So Tank Patrick must have been a fucking genocidal fucking maniac, a piece of shit. Um, but because they're associated with the Irish, well, you can't hate the Irish. That's that's racist, right? You can't do that. Um, so Tank Patrick, we all know, wasn't a taint. He wasn't a saint. He wasn't a Patrick. Nor was he a fan of the Shamrock. Uh, Tank Patrick was a total sham. Saint Patrick was said to have performed miracles, including raising 50 people back from the dead, including the giant horses, cows, livestock. But he didn't wasn't able to um, resurrect the two princesses that he had killed. Saint Patrick was, in fact, a genocidal maniac. Saint Patrick killed all the blacks and druids and Celtic, Native Irish, and non-Christians on Ireland, just like the uh, genocidal whites who genocided the Neanderthals. Saint Patrick. Forced the Native Irish to convert to Christianity, and once Taint Patrick was finished genocide in the obstinate Native Irish, they are so choked on Catholicism they haven't been able to see anything else um, all the way up until today. So that's how ingrained the Catholicism is in Ireland. Uh, however, there is a portion of Ireland, Northern Ireland, at least on the island of Ireland, the Protestant Union Unionists hold Northern Ireland. So they're actually British, right? They're actually UK. Um, because they're brainwashed assholes and they're pussies at the same time. So, yeah, fucking Northern Irish Protestants. But, of course, Taint Patrick's all about the genocide. Of course, Taint Patrick's Day is just all about genocide. Americans love for their fucking genocide since 1492. That's why we got Thanksgiving and Christopher Columbus Day, Memorial Day, Veterans Day. Still genocide today, American Empire. Coming out of the Spanish Inquisition, you had Christopher Columbus, who had murdered a half a million native Taino Indians um, in Haiti. And his voyage started a massive European migration, which eventually would genocide 100 million Native Americans. That's a genocide that's 17 times larger than Adolf Hitler's. I mean, Adolf Hitler, he would have loved that, or he did love that shit. He loved the cowboys and Indians. He loved that asymmetrical warfare. He modeled his massacre of the Jews from Columbus's genocide. Not only what did he murder a shit ton of people and start this massive genocide, Christopher Columbus would also give his military men Haitian children as an incentive to pillage and plunder with him. And then once his uh, generals and his military men were finished fucking them, then they would murder them and then throw them into a heap and pile of dead children. The entire state of Ohio named their capital city Columbus, and Ohio's been picking our presidents for decades now. So the legacy of Christopher Columbus carries on. Thanksgiving feast were held every time a massive massacre of Native American Indians happened. That uh, was the Protestant Puritan pilgrims' favorite pastime. They love massacring Indians. And they'd throw a festival right afterwards with a large feast of food. Uh, food that the Native Americans actually helped them to make and pray. Uh, thanks uh, be to God for wiping out the Indians so we could steal their land. So remember Squanto, okay, so Squanto was the lone surviving Native American left over who helped the Massachusetts Bay Colony Corporation, a land speculating colony who had half of their 103 land rapers die the first year they were here. Uh, Squanto was a nice Indian, he was a Patuxic, Patuxet. Uh, Patuxic Amer Indian, and he helped the God-fearing Christians fertilize their crops with fish, and he helped harvest their vegetables, and they survived through the winter. Okay, but uh, Squanto, when they found him initially, he was by himself. So when the Massachusetts Bay Colony Corporation found Squanto, aka Tisquantum, that's his real name, Tisquantum. So Tisquantum was all by himself because earlier English Protestants massacred his entire family and tribe. Mother, father, children, aunts, uncles, everybody. So just like George Washington wiped out the entire Iroquois, all six tribes of the Iroquois, the entire confederation, that's the same way that the English Protestants had murdered Tisquantum, a.k.a. Squanto's entire family. Completely out, right? So, yes, American terrorism, genocide's been here since 1492, and we celebrate every year with St. Patrick's Day, Christopher Columbus Day, Thanksgiving. 
Um, more facts about Squanto. He actually crossed the Atlantic Ocean six times. And um, not by choice, though, Squanto was kidnapped by John Smith's men to be enslaved in Spain. Eventually, Squanto escaped and came back to find all of his Patuxic kin dead. So, you know, that great Pocahontas movie, it was uh, John Smith's men who actually captured uh, Squanto and, and forced him into slavery. So, uh, he came back to America and eventually, you know, was able to maneuver some, you know, moves and get out of his enslavement and hopped aboard a ship and got back to America. He arrives um, back here and he sees all his Patuxent kin dead and lots of Wampanoags and Massachusetts are dead too, since Massachusetts are a type of Native American. So, the fucking Christian Protestants, right, they threw their first official Thanksgiving after the Mystic River Massacre in 1637. So this is the first official Thanksgiving, and it was during the Pequot War. And the Pequot Wars were 700 old men, women, and children were massacred down like dogs murdered in their own village as the warrior Pequot men were out looking for the Englishmen. So happy fucking Thanksgiving, you genocidal fucks, right? What a great fucking day. So they, the official, uh, the, after they massacred all the people, all the uh, uh, Pequot in the fucking village, 700 old men, women, and children, they gave thanks to God and had a big Thanksgiving feast. And what in the fuck are you all celebrating? It was official, the official, um, whatever uh, state, you know, the official, the governor of the state said, the, this day shall henceforth be known as uh, Thanksgiving. So that's what we're celebrating, the Mystic River Massacre in 1637. Every time we celebrate the Thanksgiving, we try to make it about Squanto. And if we knew more about Squanto, we see that, you know, um, his story isn't exactly great. Nor are the uh, Wampanoags. So we, the one story that we picked that is good to whitewash all the genocide isn't even that good of a story. So what do you know about the Wampanoags, right? Nobody really knows much about them. They were the Native Americans who were with Squanto who helped the Massachusetts Bay Corporation survive that winter. And how did the Protestant English repay the Wampanoags' kindness? Well, eventually they fucking just massacred him. They genocided him just, you know, like everybody else with the smallpox blankets, you know, spreading the diseases and then just straight out warfare like in the Pequot War, which was the first Thanksgiving when they just massacred 700 you know, defenseless, innocent old men, women, and children in their own village. What in the fuck are you all celebrating? Right, so that's terrorism when you attack a civilian population. So automatically, we got terrorism as soon as Christopher Columbus uh, reaches onto the shores. But more so, you know, with the Wampanoags, uh, with the, uh, the Puritans who came over here for, you know, religious freedom, supposedly. Um, they're killing fucking Native Americans by the bushel. Okay, so Medicom is also, his name was King Philip. They named him King Philip by the English. Medicom or Metacomet was eventually caught and murdered by the Plymouth Land Corporation. So they had a, this fucking war. They're fighting Metacomet for some reason. The Wampanoags, they're killing all the Wampanoags. And then Benjamin Church, um, this fucking psycho fucking piece of shit, put Metacomet's head on a pike. And then he sets the pike on uh, in the courtyard of the Plymouth Fort where it remained for 20 years. So Meta Comet's head is just decomposed and his skull is just on a fucking pike um, where it stays for over two decades, right? For two decades they just watched this uh, guy's face just decompose into a skull and I guess they kept the skull up there for to always remember how we massacred those people who taught us how to uh, raise our crops and how, you know, make sure we survived that uh, first uh, winter. So, um, after they put uh, Metacomet's head on a pike, the English cut up his body, and then they hung his pieces up in a tree, and then they sold his wife and his son into slavery in Bermuda. So they they did they killed his the father, but the wife and son they just sold him into slavery in Bermuda. So yeah, Thanksgiving Day, Christopher Columbus Day, Saint Patrick's Day, what fucking wonderful celebrations! Thanksgiving celebrations more like a white European gang thieving celebration. So Jesus was basically made up just to justify a winter solstice party and an Easter party, one party for his birth, one for his death. And we celebrate St. Patrick's death and Martin Luther King's birthday, right? Did you follow all that? So St. Patrick is dead. So actually, hallelujah, that genocidal fucking piece of shit's dead. 
um, and Martin Luther King's birthday, Hallelujah, Martin Luther King was born. So they're not all, you know, we it's uh, it's kind of pick and choose, right? But the America is just chock full of stupid bullshit fucking holidays. Um, Jesus was a complete invention, right? Valentine's Day. This is an invention to cover up Lupercalia, invention by the Catholic Church. Christmas is also an invention by the Catholic Church to cover up Saturnalia, which is another Roman festival. So you got Lupercalia, a Roman festival. You got Saturnalia, it's a Roman festival. And this uh, festival is actually it's disgusting. Um, it's a festival of naked debauchery. It's an orgy to end all orgies. And even Christ Mass from England which was more somber and tame, was too rambunctious for the Victorians. So these mythical men, Patrick Valentine, Jesus, Simon Gertie, we need to adorn them with great tales of wonder. So during the winter solstice, during the time when we should have hoarded enough fuel and food and allow for us to survive during the winter, then we go out, cut down a good living evergreen tree, put down... Uh, the now dying evergreen tree inside our limited spaced house. So the quills and needles are dropping all over the carpet, right? It's sticky. You get that sap all over you. Uh, the tree's right next to the fireplace. So that's a clear fire hazard, you know. It's just going to get drier and drier. So that's just, it's a danger all around. Makes no sense. Um, there's like three major holidays before the dead of winter solstice gets upon us, which is what Christmas is. You have Halloween and Thanksgiving and then Christmas, right? And um, so Halloween and Thanksgiving were born out of end-of-year festivals, even though they don't really mark the uh, fall equinox nor the uh, winter uh, solstice. They are in between those two, right? So September 22nd and six weeks, and so that's about October 10th-ish. So it's right before Halloween. So really, it, they mark nothing, okay? So I don't know why we have these uh, Thanksgiving uh, Halloween festivals. Um, and maybe now they're just fun to do, you know, whatever. But why are we doing it? What's the point of it? You know, do you really believe the bullshit that it comes behind all this? So on Halloween, we pass out candy to the needy's children. Thanksgiving, we have a big-ass feast because of the oncoming winter. Winter's here. We combine Halloween, Thanksgiving, we add a birthday into the mix, candies, feasts, decorations. <laughs> really, we can do whatever the fuck we want to do, okay? So, let me explain more about uh, Christmas trees. Decoration, candies, candles, lights all over our houses. Um, so, inside and out, and then we have presents. So, in the dead of winter, we shouldn't have to spend all of our surplus money and buy other people's shit. Um, other shit that they probably already have or definitely didn't even need or they could have got themselves. Uh, they're really just disappointed. Uh, we're disappointed with their gifts and then we keep these fake grins on our faces because we know none of it's fake, right? It's really not. <laughs> uh, Santa Claus is real. It's real as Jesus and God and then the Saint Easter Bunny rabbit who lays Saint chicken eggs and St. Colonel Sanders to fry up millions even though no rabbit on earth lays eggs, especially chicken eggs, right, this live birth just like humans and the St. Tooth Fairy and St. Valentine, St. Patrick, St. Nicholas, St. Fourth of July, it's bullshit, all fucking bullshit, okay, I was trying to think there's a few uh, holidays worth keeping that have a sort of um, a, a foundation and a backing, right, the, uh, the Grip Sugar Day, that should be kept, uh, Kwanzaa, that should be kept, uh, so far, those are the, the Labor Day, I like Labor Day, all the seasonal holidays, the spring equinoxes, the fall equinox, the summer solstice, and the winter solstice, all those need to be celebrated, but only Christmas takes care of winter solstice, and nothing really takes the spring summer or the fall and so we need to regenerate the uh, holidays for these uh, seasonal festivities so valentine's day you want to know about valentine's day valentine's day i'm going to tell you about valentine's day coming up valentine's day is complete bullshit it starts out with the roman lupercai priest sacrificing a dog and a goat to the wolf god since clearly Dogs and goats are the wolf's natural enemy. And the reason why we're um, uh, sacrificing dogs and goats to the wolf god is because all of Rome, Romulus and Remus, the twins, were suckled by a she-wolf. So all of Rome was founded basically by twin Mowgli's out of Disney's Jungle Book. Uh, once the dog and goat had been sacrificed, the old, old Looper Kai male priest 
would wipe blood on their foreheads, uh, make the sign of the cross, and they would dip strips of goat or dog skin, right? They would have these long strips of dog or goat skin, just peel off a long strip, right, off the dog or goat that was a sacrifice for the wolf, and they would dip it into the blood, um, of the blood, you know, the dog and goat blood. And then once they dipped the strips of goat and dog skin into the pool of blood they had collected during the sacrifice, they would run around naked, so these priests have these long strips of dog skin or goat skin dipped in blood running around naked and it's smacking pregnant women or young women they want to have sex with. Um, and the reason they would do that with the strips of the blood, blood soaked goat skin and they, that's, you know, that's, that's Valentine's Day. That's, that's true love, right? What in the fuck are you all celebrating?